Enough with the roaring kitty for now. Let's talk about the big story in this economy next week. Apple's Worldwide Developers Conference starts on Monday and expectations are high. Here to break down what we can expect is Lisa Edichico, Senior Mobile Editor at CNET. Nice to see you this afternoon. Uh, what's the big question you have as we approach Worldwide Developers Conference on Monday? Yeah, I think like everybody else, the big question that I have is how is Apple going to implement artificial intelligence more deeply into the iPhone and its other products, of course, but I think the iPhone, of course, is the big one. And according to reports that we've seen from Bloomberg and some other outlets, it does sound like artificial intelligence will be a big focus for Apple at this year's WWDC. Um, there's going to be apparently some new features that can summarize notifications for you, summarize news articles for you. But I think one of the standouts is going to be, according to the Bloomberg report, a revamped version of Siri that can actually do things in apps on your behalf. And that could go a long way in making Siri a lot more useful. I think a lot of people today probably use Siri for setting alarms and timers and things like that. But I think um, a boost like this could go a long way in, in making it a lot more helpful. How much of Apple's success, Lisa, relies on it ramping up its artificial intelligence capabilities? I think a lot. Honestly, Apple isn't always first to new technologies. We've seen that many times over the years. But Apple usually has a reputation for popularizing those technologies once it does actually break into those fields, right? So on one hand, it's not surprising to see Apple kind of wait a little bit. But on the other hand, I do think if they wait too long, they are going to miss out because I do think consumers are more curious about these features. While this might not be the case today, eventually generative AI features might factor into people's buying decisions and impact sales. So I do think it's pretty important for Apple to at least show what their vision is and what their direction is at this point. Some of the fun video we've seen out there is Sam Altman at WWD back in 2008, essentially as a kid. And now we've got this collaboration with his company, OpenAI. What do we know about the partnership? So the partnership is not official or confirmed yet. This is just something uh, based on a Bloomberg report. So we'll find out on Monday if, the, if there actually is a partnership uh, between Apple and OpenAI. But based on what we've heard from these reports, it does sound like Apple is trying to incorporate chat GPT into the iPhone in some way, which is interesting because there is already a chat GPT app for the iPhone. So I'm curious to see if there is a partnership, mm -hmm. if maybe this would mean deeper integration at the system level or something. In the AI arms race, where does Apple fall in ranking based on its capabilities versus other major competitors out there like a Microsoft? It's really hard to say right now because a lot of these companies just take such different approaches to how they implement AI into their products, right? Uh, Microsoft was, was kind of early into the game because of its relationship with OpenAI. So we saw a lot of movement in Microsoft products first and foremost last year. And Apple, I think, is maybe perceived to be behind. But the one thing that I think a lot of people kind of forget is that AI does already play a pretty big role in the, the Apple products that we use today. The difference is that the way it works today, AI really helps behind the scenes and drives a lot of the features that we use in, in ways that people don't realize. Whereas this shift to generative AI is really putting AI at the forefront and it's kind of becoming more of an assistive tool that people are consciously using. So um, I, I think it's too early to say whether Apple's behind, but I will definitely say that they're certainly not first. When it comes to hardware, though, investors and consumers alike continue to wonder when will we get a reason to go get a new iPhone? Is there any whispers out there about when we'll see the next generation of iPhone and what that advancement could even include? So Apple usually announces new iPhones in September. Of course, the company doesn't talk about new products before it's ready to announce them, so we won't know for sure. But I would be very, very surprised if we didn't see new iPhones in September. And in terms of what we're expecting, a lot of the upgrades seem to be fairly minor compared to last year. Maybe new, um, larger displays for the Pro models, a new camera capture button. That's all stuff that we've seen in reports from Bloomberg and some analysts that follow the supply chain. So we won't know for sure, likely until the fall. But I wouldn't be surprised if Apple also maybe made some AI announcements in the fall that are tied to the new hardware, but we'll see. We've seen the calls for AI regulation really ramp up to manage these systems, the way that the models are actually developed and the consumer data that they use, Lisa, is using Apple AI any safer than using other AI? 
So we won't really know until we find out what Apple's going to announce on Monday. We have no idea really what their AI plans are. We, we have a, a sense based on the reports that are out there, but nothing's official yet. But we do know that Apple usually does have a big focus on privacy and security, and they really communicate that to their uh, user base pretty clearly. So I wouldn't be surprised on Monday if we not only heard about the AI features, but what Apple is doing to make sure that your information stays private, reiterating that it doesn't use consumer data to build profiles and things like that. Yeah, you know, I think some of it will be new um, stances that we hear from Apple that are specific to AI, but I also wouldn't be surprised if they reiterated a lot of the privacy stances that they've had over the years. A few minor things have leaked out ahead of this, which is the uh, iOS 18 upgrade and this password app. What do you know about those? Yeah, so again, this is based on the reports, but um, I would not be surprised if iOS 18 is announced. Every year at WWDC, Apple usually announces new software for iPhones, and if the reports are correct, we can expect to see some of those AI features I mentioned, but also a more customizable home screen for the iPhone, which means, if true, that you wouldn't have to have all of your apps neatly arranged in that grid that we're all so familiar with. If you don't want to, you'll have more freedom to move them around. And then as for the password app, based on Bloomberg's report, it does sound like this is going to be an Apple alternative to one password or last pass or something like that. It's interesting that WWDC will come just days after NVIDIA for the first time ever surpassed Apple in terms of market value with the market value now above 3 trillion, Apple up only a few percentage points year to date. How much does ride on WWDC when it comes to competition with NVIDIA and Microsoft? I think it's a big deal. Um, you know, everyone's watching this conference to see what Apple's doing in AI. And I think, like you said, the timing is is really special. And I think um, we'll learn a lot about Apple's direction at this conference. And I think, yeah, there's certainly a lot riding on this. Is it too early to to rule Apple Vision Pro a failure and to expect a double, even triple down on the headset? So I definitely think we'll hear a little bit about Vision Pro at WWDC. Apple usually announces new software updates for all of its major computing platforms, and that now includes Vision Pro. So we'll probably hear a software update. According to Bloomberg, it sounds like we'll hear some updates that kind of um, address maybe some of the early criticisms and, and maybe make the software feel a little bit more polished. I don't think it's going to be the focus of the event because we had that last year. And like I said, we're not really expecting new hardware. Uh, and I do think it's hard to say whether it's a failure I do think it's kind of early. This thing is really expensive. I don't think a lot of people actually own it yet. So I think, you know, once the hardware becomes more accessible to a, you know, broader audience, I think that's when we'll get a sense of whether it's, it's actually resonating with consumers or not. Sounds like a partnership with Lowe's is, is going to be released sometime next week where you can go into Lowe's, put on the headset and uh, redecorate your home in some manner. I don't know if that's enough to encourage people to try. It's interesting, Lisa, one other element that we want to discuss here is those iPhone sales, the technology that powers the sales. One of the reasons that we see Apple stock underperforming this year is because of weak sales in China and growing competition in China's market specifically. What does that mean for Apple and its customers here in America? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we all know that the iPhone is Apple's biggest product. It's It's been like that for a long time. It'll likely continue to be like that. So I think the more Apple can do to drum up excitement around the iPhone, whether it's a new hardware model, whether it's new software updates that might further lock people into the iPhone and keep them within that ecosystem, I think we're always going to see that focus. You know, there's always going to be new technologies. This conversation about what's next for Apple beyond the iPhone, I feel like has been happening for a decade. And we've seen new products like the Apple Watch and the Vision Pro and AirPods, and they all kind of contribute to that ecosystem. But really, the iPhone is kind of the driver of all of those things. So I do think we'll continue to see Apple, um, you know, try to make its iPhone more appealing to competitors, uh, against competitors as much as we possibly can. Um, in China specifically, I know Huawei has made a, a big comeback recently, so I, I don't know if that has anything to do with it. But, um, but yeah, it'll continue to be important for Apple for sure. Apple is one of the biggest technology companies out there, does have its hands in artificial intelligence. And just this week, we've seen the news that the FTC and the DOJ are going to investigate some of these, or at least oversee, I should say, uh, some of these large AI companies in an effort to regulate this space. What does that mean potentially for Apple? 
I think it means, look, Apple is no stranger to the idea of regulation, to, to being watched in this way. So I wouldn't be surprised if they were expecting it. But I also think Apple is um, kind of, it seems prepared for that kind of thing, right? And I think, you know, this is just kind of the era of the tech industry that we're in right now. And it's been this way for the past uh, at least five years or so, where there's a lot more scrutiny on big tech companies. There's a lot more awareness of how important their products are in our daily lives and how much we rely on them. So I do think, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if regulators are kind of trying to, to get ahead of that now with, in this new AI wave by keeping a closer eye. All right, thank you so much, Lisa Adichico, Senior Mobile Editor at CNET. Appreciate that.